there's a theorem in physics called the virial theorem that says for a bound system and here bound just think a planet going around a star or moon going around a planet or something some, something like that um, the average kinetic energy is equal to minus a half the average of the gravitational energy or if it's electrical it would be electrical energy or, or, or so on so in an orbiting system and this is the way, the way it is what this does is it, is it relates the distance the object is away from the the, the center this the masses of of the two objects so so uh, say the little mass and the and the big mass and then the uh, um and 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 the speed so assume everything is circular so that means the speed is constant we get one half the little mass v squared is equal to minus one half and the gravitational energy is just minus the uh, uh, gravitational constant, the big mass, the little mass, all over the distance be be between them. And notice what uh, cancels here. We get, you know, essentially the, 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 the minuses cancel, the halves on each side, the little mass cancels. So a lot of things, a lot of things cancel. And, and we end up with something that is um, like the, the, the speed is equal to the square root of g m over the size of the uh, of the orbit. Uh, this is one form of what is called Kepler's law, um, and what it says is essentially that objects that are far orbiting farther away of the same of the same object, they actually move slower. They take longer to go around, both because they. Um, um, you know, if you, if you look at the time it takes them to go around, uh, the time it takes for them to go around is simply the distance over the speed. So I have two pi r, the circumference, over the speed. So what Kepler's law says is that this time is longer, not just because for, for, for a larger orbit, not just because r is bigger, so for an orbit that's, you know, kind of farther out, but because v is also smaller. So, so objects farther away move slower. Um, let me go through an example of how this could be used. Imagine that we have, uh, let's say we're dealing with the, uh, uh, the, the Earth, and the Earth has uh, um, a mass of about 6 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. Um, the gravitational constant, if you recall, is 6.7 times 10 to the negative 11 joule meter per kilogram squared. All right, and let's imagine that we're talking about an object that's going to orbit at about 380,000 kilometers or about 3.8 times 10 to the 8 meters. This is, in fact, about the distance to the moon, just to give a, a, a indication of, kind of where we're going with this. So now we can we can find the speed that this object would go at that di at that distance. And we have the 6.7 times 10 to the negative 11 joule meter per kilogram squared gravitational constant we have the 6 times 10 to the 24 kilograms and we have over the 3.8 times 10 to the 8 meters and we get a speed of about 1030 meters per second which is about 2000 or so miles an hour we can then find how long it will take to go all the way around and that was just 2 pi times the radius of the orbit the 3.8 times 10 to the 8 meters all over the speed, 10, 30 meters per second. And this will come out in seconds um, and ends up being about 2.3 times 10 to the 6 seconds, which is not very intuitive, but you can do the conversion pretty easily and find that it's about 27 days, and which is about how long the moon takes to go, to go around. So uh, if I were to think of a... a um, uh, of a moon that's twice as far away as our moon, then I could follow the same procedure. And it won't be simply twice 27 days um, because not only is the, uh, um, the R, the size of the orbit, twice as big, but the speed will be reduced by a certain factor. And so it'll take longer for it to go around. A couple of comments. Another, this, this equation for Kepler's law Okay, it looks very similar to the escape speed equation, except for they're kind of a factor of two. And you can think of it somewhat like the following. You know, if the, uh, the speed 
that I need that I can have to maintain an orbit, which would have to be less than the, than the escape speed, um, and, and so that's where you know these sorts of uh, things kind of come into play. The second the second uh, point I like to make is that let's imagine that I do know not the uh, not the mass of the object we're orbiting, but the uh, um, uh, but the properties of an object going around it, I can then infer the mass of an object going around it. So I'll do that in, in another movie.